There are some people who are just incredibly good uh, looking and they're very dashing and they never seem to bump into anything or knock it over. And they're cool and English and rich and women swoon over them. And, um, and they have new television series called The Persuaders, which co-stars Tony Curtis. Uh, whom could I be speaking of? Neither of us, <laughs> but Roger Moore, the saint. I didn't know Goofy was dead. <laughs> oh, he's not. We don't want to alarm anybody. No. That, no. that was just the end of that. I nearly left. I'm very well, thank you. Gee, you look terrific. You always look terrific. Does anything <sighs> ever go wrong with you? Don't you ever get hurt? You take tremendous beatings. You bounce I'm back. I'm always getting hurt. I had, uh, we, we finished shooting uh, last Wednesday, yeah. which I had limped through the last two weeks because three weeks before that I had to gallop a mule. Wait a minute, I, one well, doesn't gallop a mule, does no, one? No, one, one doesn't gallop a mule, but the script writer thought you did, and so he had me riding in to finish off the heavies across the field on a mule. And I spent about an hour, you know, this is bareback, and it's got a razorback uh, thing on it, this horse, the, the this mule. mule. The mule. This mule, and you really it's, just it's, ears to grab hold of. Its and own trying, back is, yeah. is rough. Uh, oh, uh, terribly rough. Very hard on I was them. speaking falsetto after half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind that. <laughs> anyway. I sort of, I really got the thing going like this, and, it, and we came in to the shop where I'm supposed to hit the fellow with my right hand and wheel the horse around, the mule, which it didn't. It just bucked me straight in the air. I'm no cowboy. And I went flying, and I landed on my back. That was the end of shooting for the day. And uh, I now have the, mule, probably. the fourth and fifth vertebrae have gone. Permanently? On the mule. No. <laughs> No, no you, I'm all right now. But I'm your back, right. you've pulled your back. Yeah, my back's okay now. It's just my eyes that are bad. But yeah. what, was there a great shout when you, when you fell off? Yeah, hooray, everybody was happy. Yeah. No, I didn't mean that. I, I, I meant being a valuable property. Did they all run to your aid and uh, fan your brow? And... What, uh, Tony threw me a cigarette and that was it, you know. Tony Citrus. <laughs> Curtis. Curtis. Yes. Spelled always, back always Citra. <laughs> spelled sideways at Citra. Spelled always... backwards, E not Citra. Do you do things backwards, too? Yeah, I'm E-Room re re Rigor. That's right. Wait yeah. a minute, E-Room Rigor. Yeah. yeah, it's a great name, isn't it? Yeah. I'm a Russian. Or Room E, Gorer. Yeah. Do you know, this, <laughs> this is much, much nicer than the last time because I was on your show in London. That's right, didn't you like that? Uh, well, I had a feeling I was never coming on. Why? Uh, well, you had uh, Jonathan Miller and Enoch Powell. Oh, you were there in the Powell night. That's right. And that was my... They kept talking. They kept talking. They kept talking. Well, I thought I'm never going on, so I was having a little <laughs> at the back. Yeah. And I, you really, you called me on. I really couldn't walk across that stage. <laughs> he did a wonderful job for a man who was on his knees. I thought <laughs> <laughs> hardly anybody guessed that you were <laughs> not just a sort of well, I made you look tall, semi graceful, you very short <laughs> man. You, well, you were soused. Slightly. I didn't know the English drank. I thought they, that was the uh, Irish. Well, we did. usually wait till the sun goes down. Mm -hmm. The sun's been down quite a long time now. <laughs> <laughs> you ever go to the North Pole, you'll be soused for six oh, months. Oh, the midnight sun. That's, I've been there. I, I, I did a tour of uh, the land of the midnight sun. We started off in a jet to Stockholm. Then we got into a Cessna and we landed somewhere. And then we got into a helicopter and we were flying and I said, you know, it's interesting because the traffic drives the same side as England. And I said, they're on the wrong side. And the pilot said, oh, no, we're over Finland. We're not allowed to fly over the Swedish defenses. And so there we are in red no man's land. And then we came, we landed on a football pitch at midnight. It was bright sunlight. Quite extraordinary. That would be strange. I, I was in Sweden and I could not get used to the, the light of being so... <laughs> well, it's a strange thing that people can come home from work and go sailing after dinner oh, yes, in broad right. daylight. Well, they all paint their houses at midnight. Yeah. There was, they, they, we, we had to go from one place where we couldn't go by helicopter, and they had delivered me a Volvo, which was the car I drove in the Saint. Mm -hmm. And they said, uh, you, the police said, you can take that road, which is a defense road, where normally people are not allowed to drive along. And I'm doing about, I suppose, 90 miles an hour. I'm in a hurry to go, and it's a straight road, but mm -hmm. gravel. And I saw a man on a bicycle in front of me, so I started blasting the horn. I had Miss Sweden on my right, mm -hmm. and uh, my stunt director behind me who's saying, slow down, slow down, the bicyclist is not going to move. And so I just thought, well, I, the last minute I'll change down. And blasting the horn, I started to change down when I had about 20 yards to go, and it was a reindeer. Looked like a man on a bicycle, you know, with the things. Just walking steadily down the middle of the road. 
what had you had to drink that time? <laughs> aquavit, a little aquavit is very nice. I've, seen, I've a seen a reindeer water. from every possible <laughs> angle, and it doesn't resemble a man at all, right? <laughs> oh, it does. What have you not been drinking? <laughs> well, well, anyone who can't tell a man from a reindeer could get into some very serious scrapes. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. But, uh, you seem perfect. <laughs> Are you proposing or something? No, nothing like that. I, I, you just seem perfect. I mean, I don't know what, how any, you're what every young man, when he gets in front of the mirror and tries to get ready to go out for a date, probably as a kid, wishes he looked like. Well, I always wanted to look like Veronica Lake, actually. Well. <laughs> really? Well, you're not far off. <laughs> No, I mean, don't you have a hole in your T-shirt or anything? Isn't there anything there? I hold in my T-shirt. You must yeah. be joking. I don't wear a T-shirt. Oh. I just wear skin next to my chest. Well, see, you're perfect. <laughs> no, no, but I mean, I mean there, there is a problem in that. You, you realize that you do fit the sort of the, um, I don't want to say stereotype, because that makes you seem less of an individual. I mean, you have all the attributes uh, of someone who they look for to, to be what you are in your profession. This, of course, <laughs> consequently, <laughs> causes a great number of women to be attracted to you all over the place, which, as everyone knows, can become extremely... All over which place? The, the entire globe, which oh, means that uh, this can become tiresome and present problems to you as these ladies lie in waiting for you outside your hotel room door and other places too numerous to mention. Is this a monologue? How, uh, I'm trying to get to the question, and I it's can't not think... reading it either. It's not... How do you handle all, all, all these women? My wife looks after it for me. She is... Uh... She's Italian. Your wife's Italian? Yeah. Ah, then, that, then you have no problem at all. I have no problem whatsoever. Ooh. It was hardly <laughs> worth that long question, was it? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any problems because of the, the show, The Saint? Did you ever, I, it's silly to say, did, did any saints ever complain? But you know what I mean. Did, did, no, did, no uh, nearly, nearly. Uh, nearly? Nearly. Uh, my, my daughter started convent school a couple of years, or three years ago. Uh -huh. And... At that time, as I mentioned before, I used to drive... Now I drive an Aston Martin, so it's all right, so I can mention Volvo. But yeah. uh, I... Uh, what are you sniggering for? <laughs> and I, I, on early days, could go to the school and pick her up. And the big girls class was by the gates of the school. And 16-year-olds and one of the daughters took shorthand of one of the writers in the studio who was in the big girls class. Mm -hmm. It was a long way of getting around to it. But anyway, the uh, mother superior was taking the class that particular afternoon when I drove in. And all the girls are trying to look out of the window, you know, because an actor's coming in and they recognize the car. And she said, uh, although Mr. Moore in person may have a more pleasing aspect than, which, than that which he portrays on the cinematographic screen, he is not a saint. And until his holiness, in all his wisdom in Rome, sees fit to canonize him, you will remain seated while he comes into the school. <laughs> <laughs> I took my That's daughter out of that school, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want her talking like that. That's a lovely sentence. Yeah, it's a Did, you didn't hell of a sentence to remember. <laughs> yeah, you didn't feel put down by that at all? Uh, no, no, because the next uh, sort of end of term day, I signed autographs for the nuns. Yeah. Which surprised me, you know, I never thought they... I, oh, it was awful, I was Warner Brothers doing um, Maverick or the Alaskans. Mm -hmm. And we had, we had some visitors on the set one day, and I was standing with my back to everybody behind the, you know, by the side of the camera, delivering offstage lines. And I <clears throat> goofed a line, which I normally do, and I was so angry having goofed it to the actor I was feeding with the line that I let out two short blasphemous words. Blasphemous words? Yes, which I won't repeat now. And then I turned, and to my horror, I saw these nuns. And there were 24 of them. And so afterwards, I was taken over and introduced them, and I apologized. I said, you must forgive me for my language. I'm terribly sorry. And they said, it's all right, my son. We're sorry for you. <laughs> <laughs> and afterwards, I played we're, the same. It's yeah. marvelous, isn't it? Were you raised as a Catholic? No. Yeah. Oh. No, no, I'm a, a Protestant. Uh -huh. How old were you during the war? Can you remember it? Uh, I was either 11 or 12 when it started, and I was in the army when it finished. Oh, then you clearly were. I, I remember it all right. Were you bombed during the war? <laughs> well, we ever. <laughs> I've got, it seems that rings a bell. So I think, yes, I, I, think no. I asked Hermione Gingold that once. She said, I was bombed during most of the war. <laughs> but, uh, but can you remember uh, oh, close yes, shaves? We, we, uh, we, had, we had bombs. We spent uh, all the blitzes living in an Anderson shelter in the garden. 
We no, it. it was called an Anderson shoulder after the man who designed it, uh -huh. which was sort of two nasty pieces of corrugated iron like that with a hole in covered up with earth. And my mother, father and I and our dog used to get in it. It was awful. How deep down was it? Oh, it was only sort of covered by about three feet of earth. Mm -hmm. If you got a direct hit, you, you'd had it. Yeah. And, but incendiary bombs could drop on it and you wouldn't feel anything. Just get a little warm, that's all. Yeah. Well, it must, we, have, must have been terrifying with those V2 bombs, you know, those oh, buzz yeah. bombs. Yeah, did you see those V2s call. go over? Oh, yes. I, when uh, the, uh, the buzz bombs were going, I, I was working as a cartoonist then, an animated cartoonist, in mm -hmm. Wardour Street, yeah. And I used to have, we used to have what we called bomb spotters. And it was always somebody's turn on the road to get up on the roof and say if the, blow a whistle if the bomb is coming. Uh, and I saw one coming and I got so frightened I dropped the whistle. <laughs> we lost 45 people that day. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of black humor there. Uh, but uh, could, did those things go over so that you could see them go? It's, oh, yes. It's funny, I was just thinking, I had Werner von Braun here one night in that same chair who designed them. Which I was wish I had had him here tonight. I have a few words well, to say to him. It, but I, I, I picture from a movie I saw, can you, could you see them go traveling? Oh, yes. Did they travel at a speed you could watch them, or was it shoom? Oh, no, they, they, they move very slowly. These yeah. were the V1s. The V2s were the, were the rockets that just sort of went shoom, boom, and you heard it coming after it arrived. Why wasn't it easy to shoot them down if they traveled slowly? Oh, they used to shoot them down. They used yeah. to shoot some of them down. But enough got through. But they, they used to sneak through. They were yeah. nasty. It was they a lousy way of fighting a war. Half the size of an airplane, did, too. They were weren't they? that huge, you know. And then yeah. they had this great pit, uh, pipe out the back. That was, that was the jet, uh, actually. Were the you there? No, but I saw a lot of films <laughs> on that. No, <laughs> were, it was a terrifying thing, I can imagine, because the motor would yeah. cut out, see? You'd and then they'd just drop anywhere. They wouldn't... Oh, once the motor stopped, then you didn't yeah, know yeah, where it was. You'd hear... You know, and then... That was two miles away. And you weren't scared as a kid. Uh, no, did it I, seem I, anything, did I it don't seem think exciting you did. or in any sense fun? I know that sounds silly, but... No, it was a sense of adventure. You didn't have any gas or any water or electricity. You know, you'd have things like that. It was like camping out. Mm -hmm. uh, but you, you, you don't have a fear when you're living amongst it. It seems a normal way of life, which is ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. But it's going on today, you know. This is the awful thing. The whole world is full of it. But I can't imagine what it would be like to have been a kid during it. I used to see the movies, and I used to think, I wonder what it would be like if, uh, you know, I used to think, will they ever bomb this place? And uh, I hope not. It seemed strange to, as a kid to We came close. That. Very close. What used to get me were stories of people in California who saw planes shot down, but it wouldn't appear in the paper. You know, they would see it, or a Japanese plane would get in close. Really? They, they used to get there? There are a few of those, yeah. yeah. And a friend of mine had a submarine near Santa Barbara. Right. A submarine came in one night and shelled a... Uh, Shell oil station. tanks, yeah. and uh, it was never uh, reported. But those until planes then. had to be kamikaze because they couldn't obviously get from those days from Japan to America and do the return trip. They might have taken off from the, I don't know where. Let me look into it. I know the submarine story is true. <laughs> I believe you. I believe you. Yeah. There's a plaque there, and in, in, uh, is it near Santa yeah, Barbara? Where Santa Barbara, happened? right? Yeah. Right. And this guy was a coast watcher, and he had seen this thing out there all day, and it was it was disguised as a kelp cutter. And he reported it even, and they said, no, it's a kelp cutter. And that night it shelled the oil tanks, and he got a gold star for being right. But mm. it was a little late. Well, it's interesting, isn't it?